For my submission, I created a genetic algorithm to solve the eight queens problem. In this puzzle, eight queens must be arranged on a standard eight by eight chessboard so that none of them are under attack. This task may seem impossible, but there are 92 solutions out of the 4.4 billion possible board arrangements. In my Java application, I chose to solve this problem using a genetic algorithm, a form of artificial intelligence. In this video, I will outline each step of my algorithm and display my application. In order to approach the eight queens problem, I had to have a standard way of representing the location of queens on a board. Each board of queens is represented in an array of values. In this example, we have 23064271. As you can see, the values must be between 0 and 7, and each value represents a queen's row, while the index of the value represents the queen's column. This data type is the backbone of my genetic algorithm because it allows me to easily calculate how many queens are under attack. Also, it allows two different boards to be combined to produce new boards. In the beginning of the algorithm, a method called generate starting population is called. In this method, the population is initialized with 150 different boards, all with random positions. To find which board is the closest to solving the puzzle, a fitness function is applied to each board. This function counts how many queens are under attack on the given board. Then, the array of 150 different boards is sorted in order of fitness, so that the most fit board is at the beginning of the population. To produce the next generation of boards, reproduction must take place. Similar to natural selection, the more fit boards are more likely to reproduce children, while the weaker boards will have less influence on the next generation. In reproduction, two parents are chosen from, the, from a random function, which can see, be seen right here in code. So for the two parents that we need to choose, a random variable is initialized, which has a value zero through one, not including one. And um, then a random index is calculated by raising this random value to the fifth power and then multiplying it by the population size, which is 150. And if we graph this equation on Desmos, we will see, um, um, there's a lot higher probability for the more fit boards to be chosen. So the boards that are ranked under 20 will have about a 65% chance of getting chosen, while the boards 20 through 150 will have 35% chance of getting chosen. After choosing these two parents in selection, two children must be produced. In this example, we have two different boards, parent one and parent two. And they'll be combined to create two new children. So next, a random crossover point between one and seven is chosen for each set of parent boards. So for this set, we have three. And now to combine them, we take the first three numbers from the parent one and the last numbers from parent two, and we combine them into a new child. And then for the second child, we're going to take the first three numbers of parent two and combine them with the last five numbers of parent one. These child boards now have an 80% chance of being mutated. If a child board is randomly selected to be mutated, one of its row values switches to a random number between zero and seven. Mutations are necessary in my genetic algorithm because they introduce new variations to existing boards that are close to solving the puzzle. The reproduction process is repeated until enough child boards are created to fulfill the size of the original population. Generations continue to evolve until a board is found that has no queens under attack. My program allows users to customize many different variables in the genetic algorithm, such as mutation chance, which controls the percentage of boards that are mutated in each generation, selection factor, which influences the amount of strong or weak parent boards being selected for in reproduction, population size, which determines the number of boards in each generation, and number of generations and delay in milliseconds. Right now we have the delay in milliseconds set at 50 milliseconds so that we can see the, um, the algorithm converge on a solution. So when you hit restart, it'll start converging and then in nine generations, it reached a fitness of zero with this board because you can see that none of them are attacking each other. And so that means that we found our solution. And if we want to try it on a higher board, we can increase the board size As you can see, it converges really fast. And if I set the delay in milliseconds to zero seconds, zero milliseconds, it'll converge almost instantly. I've tried it with many different board sizes and I've, the highest one I've reached is 720 by 720, 
which is crazy. I did not think that I'd be able to reach that high of a board size with this algorithm. And it took me, it took a long time, but with a board size such as 60 by 60 and setting the gen number of generations to unlimited, you can see that the algorithm converges still very quickly on a solution. Right now it's at a fitness of one, so it means that one queen is still attacking another one. And now it has converged on a solution. So as you can see, my algorithm converges on solutions very quickly and can be scaled to find solutions for larger board sizes. I hope that this makes a great tool for developers or users who want to test specific variables effect on the efficiency of the end queen's genetic algorithm.